Welcome back. We're here live at the scene of a press conference that happened earlier this afternoon. It was reaction to news of a possible pardon in the works for a former KCPD detective convicted in a fatal shooting. But speaking of pardons, keep in mind there are usually a lot of steps before someone does receive a pardon. To learn more about that process specifically, KSHP 41 News reporter Alyssa Jackson talked to a man who was pardoned back in 2018. Now he says he's helping others go through that process. I mean, he's a white police officer in Kansas City who, who, who killed a, a black man. And so those dynamics, um, especially in Missouri, where Missouri's, I mean, just, just be honest, it's racist. It's a racist state. Um, that's why, and, and for political reasons, people feel as if they, they should pardon him. But if he was a black man on the east side of Kansas City. In a letter released today, Jackson County prosecuting attorney Gene Peters Baker put it this way, quote, this extreme action to pardon the only KCPD officer convicted of fatally shooting a black man will ignite distrust, protests and public safety concerns for citizens and police. Do you think this will fuel that us against them mentality? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. When you when you see people and who are people of color being incarcerated on a massive scale and getting getting lots of time and then immediately having to surrender themselves to the Department of Corrections. They're not being able to get out and still be active while the governor works on a plan to pardon them. Remember the former KCPD officer we're talking about is Eric Deval Kinnear. He was convicted of two felonies in the 2019 shooting death of Cameron Lamb. Last year he was sentenced to six years in prison, but he hasn't served any time because the judge let him be out on bond during the appeal process. Well, I did my five years and then I did, uh, they wanted me to be uh, free, crime free for 10 years. So that's a total of 15 years before they even considered me for, for a pardon. And, and, and this officer hasn't even began to serve his sentence. So that's not that's kind of, that's not really fair. Waller can speak to the process because he's been pardoned and he's helping others get that same forgiveness. There are some people right now who want to apply for a pardon. Um, and so I'll probably, you know, when they see this happening, they'll probably, I'd have to go talk to them and explain why. That's not going to happen for them. Waller says executive clemency, specifically in this instance, can be damaging. As you watch people of color struggle in particular situations, and as you watch, you know, people like Ricky Kidd's situation and some other people or people who've been on death row recently where the evidence wasn't even as compelling as it should, the governor has, has not taken uh, 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 interest in there when he he, he could have stepped in. And if he could say one thing to Governor Parson before he possibly makes this decision, he'd remind him of the violent year we've had so far. You know, if you talk about Kansas City, we've we've experienced a whole lot of pain, and it's kind of why 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 add to that? Waller explained how clemency is different than expungement. Some offenses can't be expunged, but the governor has the power to pardon anyone. But people typically exhaust all legal remedies before that happens. In the newsroom, Alyssa Jackson, KSHB 41 News.